Biopic of an Italian nun who moves to New York to build orphanages in the slums portrays her as holy, holy in her mission. Leslie Felperine, Mon 11 Mar, 2024. 1100 GMT share released in the UK. To coincide with International Women's Day, this biopic of Italian nun Francesca Saverio Cabrini, also known as Mother Cabrini, 1850-1917, is literally a hagiography. Cabrini, played by Cristiana Delana, was canonized a saint in 1946, making her the first U.S. citizen to be sanctified. But don't let the religious angle put you off too much. In fact, the film is reasonably critical of certain members of the clergy who stood in the way of Cabrini's charitable goals, including Pope Leo III, Giancarlo Giannini, and the Archbishop of New York, Michael Corrigan, Swiss Army Knife supporting actor David Morse. Then again, Cabrini is presented as pretty much holy, even holy, good. A fierce little creature who would let nothing impede her aim to build orphanages, hospitals, and other charitable institutions to help the poor. Surely, given she was a human being, there must have been some dark side. A little too much of the sin of pride, perhaps? A sin of omission or two, maybe which stopped her from noticing wrongdoing within her institutions? Lord knows there was plenty of that to go round in late 19th and early 20th century orphanages and the like. If, however, you can suspend such skepticism, Cabrini's story is rather absorbing and the film offers a lushly mounted portrait of life in 1880s New York, when immigration was just as much of a contentious issue as it is today. After a bit of story set up in Italy, explaining how Mother Superior Cabrini wanted to start a mission in China, but was persuaded by Pope Leo III to go to New York instead, the script gets going when she arrives in Manhattan with small superfluity of nuns, a gaggle of five who barely get a word to say throughout, even though they must have been pretty instrumental in Cabrini's success. After making their way to a notorious slum in the Five Points, a Manhattan neighborhood that's now changed beyond all recognition, Cabrini gets to work building an orphanage after much conflict with Archbishop Corrigan over fundraising. Indeed, there's an interesting emphasis here on the financial side of Cabrini's business. And although she may have been named the celestial patroness of all immigrants, perhaps her beneficence should be extended to tax accountants as well. That monotony extends to the film's visual blandness. Nearly every frame shot by cinematographer Gorka Gomez Andreo is coated in the artificially overblown sunlight coming through the windows in every interior to force an angelic atmosphere onto the story. There's a fakeness to the patina that makes us hyper aware of the limitations in production value given the ambition and scope of this tedious period drama. That's not entirely surprising, however, since the goal here is mere proficiency and not cinematic excellence. The delivery of the message takes priority. As long as the product appears accomplished enough to warrant a theatrical release, artistic relevance is secondary. It's almost as if Monteverdi aims to appeal to, to the fringe political spectrum in this country by portraying himself and his work as examples of what good immigrants can do when they reject progressive ideals and align themselves with fascism based on religious affinity. The director's politics are inextricable from his filmic output, given that former soap opera actor Eduardo Verastegui, Monteverde's producer, friend, and sometimes star, has become a far-right voice in Mexican politics with an aggressive pro-life and anti-LGBT stance. It doesn't take much digging to find a video of Monteverde on an American Christian TV show proclaiming that the media is poisoning the youth's minds. What he and Vertigai are doing, both seem to think, is simply fighting Hollywood from within. But will their target audience, those watching through a white supremacist, anti-woke, and surely anti-immigrant lens, be willing to extend the same empathy the movie might make them feel for Italian children of the same race and faith to the kids arriving at the southern border escaping poverty and violence, or to those dying in Gaza. Doubtful.
Even Sound of Freedom, which rallied the right's most extreme voices, didn't move the needle positively on immigration, despite depicting Latin American victims of child trafficking. As much as Cabrini envisioned an empire of hope, Monteverdi and his collaborators dream of one of influence. But for all that can be questioned about the maker's intentions, the movie's greatest sin is how lifelessly solemn and aesthetically dull it is. Equidistant from the shock value slop of the God's Not Dead franchise and from anything remotely considered interesting filmmaking, Cabrini lies in a middle ground of mediocrity. Read more about Alejandro Monteverde, Cabrini.